First to start, um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Megan Kersick, and I coordinate Michigan Communities for Financial Empowerment at CEDAM. I also oversee the assistance activities that CEDAM provides for Show Me the Money Day host. We've also got Tiffany Lemieux McKissick with us today. She directs the Asset Independence Coalition, um, which serves Clinton, Eaton, and Ingham counties with both Vita Services, Bank On, and Show Me the Money Day in Mid Michigan. We also have Lisa Bank, who is our communications and training specialist at CEDAM. She is in charge of our graphic design for Show Me the Money Day, and you'll be able to interact with her throughout the next few months um, on graphic design assistance from our standard flyers and quarter pagers and logos, but also in any assistance um, or support you need putting together other marketing materials for your event. And then finally, we have Liv Hagerman, who is our events and membership associate at CEDAM. Um, she'll also be providing assistance to you throughout the next few months. So quickly to overview our agenda, um, we're going to start with just a review of, of Money Day. What is Show Me the Money Day? Um, what are the core elements and key opportunities of hosting an event? We'll do some um, review of two, our 2014 events and then provide some information um, about how to connect with CEDAM um, and begin to receive our assistance activities throughout the next few months. Then we'll have a special presentation um, from Tiffany with AIC. She's going to talk about how to drive attendance at your event. Um, Tiffany oversees Show Me the Money Day Lansing, and this past year in 2014, they more than doubled their attendance. So I'm really excited to have Tiffany here be able to provide some guidance and feedback for all of you on how to really build attendance for your events next year. Then we'll conclude with just a listing of the assistance activities CEDAM provides all our Show Me the Money Day events, and then a question and answer session. So to get started, I am interested in finding out how many of you have hosted an event in the, in the past or how many of you are new to Show Me the Money Day. Wow, so as you can see, quite a few of you are new to Money Day. So that's really exciting for me. Um, last year we had 11 events, and we would love to get um, upwards of 20, 25 events this coming year. Um, and with the numbers on our webinar today, it looks like we could do so. So welcome for those of you who are new to Money Day. Um, thanks for being on, uh, and then also we are lucky to have some folks who have hosted in the past so they can help provide some feedback too um, about the different responsibilities, um, challenges, and opportunities of Money Day. For the new folks, what is Show Me the Money Day? So Show Me the Money Day is a series of statewide events in Michigan that kick off tax season throughout January and early February. Our goal is to connect Michigan residents with resources to reach greater financial stability at tax time. So at CEDAM, we recognize that tax time is definitely, definitely a financial opportunity for our families in Michigan. Um, it's at least a time that once a year you have to sit down with your financial portfolio and fill out your taxes, but especially for low to moderate income families, um, this is a particularly important opportunity because it's been found that for recipients of the earned income tax credit, upwards of 30% of the family's total annual income actually comes through the tax refund. And so if there's potentially one time a year when these families can maybe think about saving for their children's education, putting a down payment on a house or a car, to help them better get to work and other um, responsibilities, tax time is it. So we like to use Show Me the Money Day as an opportunity for communities across Michigan to connect their residents with a range of supports and services in the financial realm. So that begins with financial products and services, um, employment opportunities, free tax assistance, benefits access, but then all the way up through longer asset building opportunities like post-secondary education, home ownership, and small business. So we've got some key event elements that we always present to, um, to local hosts. I and mean, we think that by following our event elements, you can ensure to have a successful event. And so the first thing is to have a planning committee. I mean, you want to make sure that there's a um, diverse range of participants on the planning committee. So 
you know, usual suspects like a local asset building or VITA coalition and community-based organizations, but also reach out to financial institutions, local employers, even local government and education institutions so that you get a range of expertise on your planning committee and can ensure that your participants really get a, a broad range of opportunities at the event. Um, next element is marketing. So you definitely want to have a marketing plan for your Show Me the Money Day event. Um, from CEDAM's standpoint, we provide assistance with um, creating a standard flyer um, and a standard logo for Show Me the Money Day. But then different lo local host organizations have used a number of different venues for marketing their events. And those have included radio and TV commercials, Facebook pages, um, through their 2 one call center, um, and then also using organizational ambassadors, so um, organizations that maybe interact with your target audience on a day-to-day -day basis can be sure to know about the event, pass out marketing materials, and talk about the event to encourage attendance. Okay, so this next slide shows the event elements that are really key for the day of um, at your event. Um, first, we'd, we'd love for events to have a press conference where Local or state elected officials, IRS representatives can welcome everyone at the beginning um, and talk a little bit about the importance um, of building financial stability at tax time. Then um, the three other key elements are the vendor cafe, um, which is where entities in the community get to set up um, tables to provide resources and other information and engage with event participants. Another important element is the financial workshop. So we ask that host organizations um, pull together a series of classes and workshops that are free for attendees um, to help them build their financial knowledge um, and connect them with opportunities to increase their financial stability. And then finally, we think it's important to make the event fun and to have a level of prizes and other giveaways that can draw participants. And so um, in the past, prizes have included laptops, iPads, gift cards, T-shirts, bags, um, and then also, I didn't add it to this slide, but to get back to that fun element, um, some of our events have actually had music and DJs and dancing, so making sure that this is not just a, you know, sort of boring, technical, informational event, but something that people look forward to and have a fun time. Just to conclude this piece, um, I wanted to talk about what I see as the key opportunities of hosting a Show Me the Money Day event. So um, the first is, you know, the, probably the most important, but and that is ensuring that community access to financial opportunity. I think that there is a, there's often a number of opportunities in any given community for individuals to um, access greater financial information, products and savings programs that, that can help them build a greater level of financial stability, but it's not always known to our residents all that is available in that, that full range of community supports. And so oftentimes in our um, Show Me the Money Day surveys with participants, most people respond, I never knew there was so much help out there, and now I do. So we really want to make sure that community access is a key priority for the event. But then the second important opportunity is stakeholder coordination and collaboration. Moving back to the planning committee and the vendor cafe, both um, are opportunities for you to bring together a range of entities in a community that aren't, not, aren't always at the same table. So community-based organizations, local government, financial institutions, employers, bringing those entities together um, and having them interact often is a platform or foundation for greater collaboration between those entities in the future. So I just wanted to give a shout out to our 2014 events. Um, so we had um, 11 communities host Show Me the Money Day events in 2014. If you are on the call and you are from one of these communities but you didn't know you actually had an event last year, Make sure you contact me after because I will be sure to connect you with the planning committee host for your community so that you can become a part of that event. Okay, and then this slide just gives you a quick overview of 
some of our numbers from last year. So again, 11 communities hosted events. We had over 700 attendees statewide, 66 different workshops, 112 vendors, 69 tax returns were actually completed at events. Um, and then 97% of our participants who filled out a survey gave the event a very good or excellent rating. That's always good to see. So one more poll. I know we've got a lot of new folks, um, and I also wanted to then get some information about where you all are from. So if you can just fill in the text box um, and provide the community that you represent, I'll give you another two minutes to fill out this poll. Okay, about 10 more seconds. So I don't believe you all can see the results. I wish you could. Um, it's pretty great because we've got folks from Detroit, Bay County, Oakland County, the Upper Peninsula, Jackson County, Northeast Michigan. Um, so it's wonderful to see both communities that have already had an event, but then all of you new communities on the call. Um, definitely look like we have a statewide presence. The last piece before we get to Tiffany's presentation, um, here's just a list of the steps that you can take to connect with CEDAM. Um, so if you haven't already been to our website, if you go to showmethemoneyday.org, and that's our main site with all of the information about events. And there's a tab um, titled Plan an Event, which walks you through the various assistance activities we provide and what you need to do um, to interact with us. So the very first thing is that um, once you go to that plan an event tab on the Show Me the Money Day website, we have a community sign-up sheet. So please fill out that online form, and then we'll have your contact information, know that you're interested, and CDM staff will be able to follow up with you um, to coordinate our assistance. So we've got a number of electronic resources on the website, so feel free to check those out. Um, and then there's also an MOU. Um, and it, so in order to access the graphic design assistance and some additional resources, we do request that each host organization sign an MOU um, just to ensure that we have a level of consistency with our events. Um, and so you can find the MOU on the website, um, fill it out, and then you can email or fax it to me. And then finally, just to know um, if if you are interested in taking advantage of the graphic design assistance that we provide, um, there is a graphic design request form on the plan and event page. Um, and so we need those forms by December 15th of this year in order to ensure that we have time um, to get that graphic design assistance complete. So just a few tips from, from my perspective about how to make your event a success, and then we'll move to a local perspective with Tiffany Lemieux McKissick. So first off, I think you definitely need to start planning at least by October. Most events start planning much before. I think some events have already been planning um, as early as July. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to get moving on putting together a plan planning committee as soon as possible, definitely no later than October. Um, you want to secure a space for your event sooner rather than later. And I think it's important with your planning committee to really think through not just sort of the first space that comes to mind, but where it makes the most sense from a transportation perspective and accessibility perspective, um, because space can definitely make a difference. I know it's been seen in some of our past events. Um, a change of venue has really upped attendance. So if you think through the best place to have this beforehand, that can help you ensure good attendance to your event. Um, you'll need to recruit vendors and instructors for your financial education classes. 
Most events are held on weekends. You want to get the word out as early as possible so that people block their schedule. Um, and then, you know, you'll, you'll go through the processes of securing funding for um, prizes, food, equipment, and marketing materials. Um, and again, sooner rather than later to ensure you have um, the level of resources needed to, to implement your event. And then finally, you'll want to kick off your marketing. So I'm going to pass things off to Tiffany Lemieux-McKissick with the Asset Independence Coalition in Mid Michigan. And she is going to provide some feedback on how to drive attendance to your event. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, as, as Megan mentioned, I'm Tiffany Lemieux-McKissick, and I'm the director of the Asset Independence Coalition here in Lansing. And um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about us, and then I'm going to give you some insight on some lessons we've learned and some things we've been doing. So just to give you a little bit of background, those of you that aren't familiar with us, we're a 50-member um, coalition, asset building coalition in mid-Michigan, and we service Ingham, Eaton, and Clinton counties. That's kind of a smattering of our members and our partners, just to give you some context. Um, some of the things that we do in our asset building coalition is we operate a VITA program. We also house the Bank on Mid-Michigan program. Of course, we host the Show Me the Money Day. Um, and we also leverage our partnerships and coalition members to provide financial counseling and other financial services in mid-Michigan to um, low to moderate income families. So just to give you some perspective on who we are and kind of our outreach um, and our VITA, because I think probably a lot of you have um, VITA coalitions in your area too. Last year we operated 26 VITA sites and we served 3,629 households and refunded about $3.9 million back to the community with some of our VITA sets. And then to give you a little perspective on our Show Me the Money Day stuff, um, so this is our fourth year hosting the event. We were the first community to host it. Um, Megan kind of came up with this uh, four years ago and launched in Lansing. Um, last year we had 167 people that came. And those of you that have hosted the event before, um, you know, I think when you look at this number, um, well, you can look at it a couple of different ways. One, you can think, oh, you know, for a fourth year event, maybe that's not so big. Or you can say, oh, shoot, you know what, I've been hosting it for several years and I'm getting about 25 to 50 people. And I want you to not be discouraged by that because last year in our third year, we only had 67 people that came to our events. And it's, the thing about it is that this event is phenomenal, it's worthwhile, um, but it's not an easy thing to get people to come out on Saturday morning and kind of face their financial issues and kind of deal with that. So I think... Through our marketing and our efforts, we've really been able to kind of encourage people to come out and to show them that it's authentically something that's worthwhile. Um, and I think it takes a little while to establish that and to build that trust, honestly. Um, that bottom number right there is our, is our sponsorship money this year. And I'm going to go through with you what we spent on marketing. Um, and I'm going to warn you ahead of time, too, that we spent a lot more than probably the average um, planning committee did on Show Me the Money Day, but our goal really was to increase that attendance and see how much we could get um, with our marketing dollars. So here's our marketing strategy, and I'm going to go through everything with you. And if you have questions, just put it right in the chat box, and I'll make sure we answer them for you. But um, So first of all, we did something unique this year. We hired a publicist, and I know that sounds kind of maybe highbrow or high-end or something kind of intense to do, but the reason we did that is because... Um, in our planning committee, we didn't necessarily have the capacity to manage the type of marketing plan, that, marketing strategy that we wanted to do. And also, um, AIC had some other marketing strategies for our VITA program and our other programs. So we hired a publicist, and one element of what they did for us was showing me the money day. And I would highly recommend it. Um, you'd be surprised how affordable it can be, and I'm going to go through with you what we actually spent on each of these elements. Um, and you won't be surprised how amazing and how much easier it makes your life. So I highly recommend it. Um, and if you need a referral um, or if you have questions about that, again, I'm, I'm completely willing to answer that for you. Something else we did this year is billboards. Um, we did radio ads. And I'm going to speak to you a little bit about why we did that. First of all, um, we really decided we wanted a multi-channel approach. And what I mean by that is that we wanted the public to see Show Me the Money Day in every venue possible. So not only did we want to see them to see it in the sky, we wanted to hear them on the radio, and newspaper, Facebook flyers. But the thing about it is I think that any one of those strategies by itself is not successful, but when you pair them all together and the public begins to recognize your brand and it's in their mind as much as possible, I think that's where you get the biggest bang for your buck. 
But really another reason why we went for the billboard and radio ads, and, and we have done TV in the past. We didn't do that this year. But um, the reason why we went for the billboard and radio ads is because that really gives you a hook for something high-end for your sponsors. So, um, I, you know, am I going to tell you that billboard and radio is going to get you a million people to your event? No, I'm not. But the thing is, is that in order to get high-level sponsorship, you need to be able to deliver high-end advertising. And so that's why our strategy consists of some of those elements. Um, so for the radio ads, we advertise one week out on the radio. It was one of our <clears> – <throat> it's our partner that fit our demographic for our target was. And then we also did a live remote from the event. Um, we also advertised in our local newspaper. We did Facebook ads, which actually were very successful. I'm, I was a little skeptical about that, but we had a lot of good feedback about Facebook, and we could see all the shares happening, and it kind of gave the community a chance to promote the event as well. Um, we distributed a ton of flyers, postcards, not as many posters, um, but our distribution for that is we papered the community. Um, and then the next bullet point you can see is we did a mailing from our Financial Empowerment Center partner, who does financial counseling in our region, and also from the Ingham County Treasurer's Office. They sent that to all of their delinquent um, tax folks. And I have to tell you that that mailing was enormous for us. My phone was ringing off the hook each time that went out. So that was a really good strategy for us. And the postcards were a part of that mailing. Also, we did some guerrilla stuff. We had tons of volunteers and community and, and committee members. And every time that we went somewhere, I asked people to carry them with them in their car and their purse. I kept them in my purse. And literally everywhere I went, from the grocery store to a restaurant, even to the bathroom, which sounds kind of crazy, but effective, I promise you, um, we left those postcards. And so that's a simple, easy thing to do is give them to your planning committee members and just say, hey, wherever you go, to a meeting, to anything, leave those postcards there. Um, and that, again, kind of, you know, really gives you the chance to blanket your community. Um, and then the last bullet there is email through partners. And I'll touch on that a little bit more. But just understand that leveraging those community partnerships, I like how Megan put it, your organizational ambassadors, is probably the most important element you can do. So, again, if you look at our marketing and say, ooh, I don't really have this kind of money to spend, um, then your first step and your most important step is really to leverage those community partnerships because that's going to be where you get the strongest referrals from. So I'm going to break down a little bit on what we spent um, and where and kind of explain that to you. So for our publicists, like I said, it's surprisingly affordable. Um, but what we did is we packaged it with um, some other marketing we were doing. So the money day piece was 500. The same thing with the billboards. We actually did. We ran three different campaigns for our Vita program, um, for our My Free Taxes program, and for Show Me the Money Day. So that $600 was an element of all of it. And we actually went with digital billboards because they were the most affordable, and we could, we placed four throughout the community. Um, that and we ran those for five weeks. And then the radio ads, again, that's where we spent the most money, but the sponsors really want to be on the radio. So to get those high-level sponsors, you kind of have to do that high-level advertising. It's kind of a chicken and an egg thing. Um, and a big chunk of that was the live remote. The newspaper ads, we were, made, we, able, we were able to get donated, which was awesome. And then look at those Facebook ads. We spent 150 bucks to boost those. We did tons of it, tons and tons of it. Very affordable, very effective for us. And also look at that number. Remember all the – I got thousands of things printed. You can find really great printers that will print them for very, very cheap, and that's an excellent way, again, to do some um, hardcore marketing. And then luckily in our community, um, our treasurer's office is very connected, and both them and the financial empowerment center donated that mailing for us. We provided the postcards, and they mailed it out. Um, and then, again, the emails through the partners, so that's free. And I have to tell you that um, – when we looked at our survey results for where our marketing um, was most effective, it's always, every year, it's through our partners. Um, and I think some ways that they help us do that is not only through emails, but they tell their clients, and they invite, 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 invite. Um, I can't stress that enough. You really need to ask your partners to keep inviting the community folks, because that, again, establishes that level of trust. And I think the other thing you have to ask when you're ready to launch your marketing, are we authentically showing people the money? And what I mean by that is, number one, are you providing prizes that are doing that? Number two, are you providing authentic opp opportunities for financial resources, um, money-saving tips? I think you really need to look at if you're genuinely showing your community the money, because that's the point, right? And sometimes that can be lost, I think, in everything else that we're trying to do. Um, so I think that's really important. And the other thing I'll touch on um, quickly is the timing of it. Um, 
it's it's a little tricky because we're going to you you know the holidays are right before it. But I'm going to say you really want to start hitting your marketing hard at least 4 weeks out. Um our event was mid February um and so we were able to to market for about 6 weeks. So we started 6 weeks out soft and then one month in we were pretty we were we were rocking with most of these elements and then really 2 weeks out we wanted to be everywhere. Um, we didn't want people. We wanted people to be in front of people as much as possible at that two-week out point. So it's really important that you start advertising as soon as possible to really get um, in front of folks. Um, and if I have here my contact information, and um, I am completely willing to answer questions or help any of you in any way possible. You have my email there and my phone number. Don't hesitate to call me or email me. Um, you know. Oh well. Oh well. Oh, well, at the end of the day, this is a phenomenal event for this community. Oh, one last thing. Make sure to make it fun. You know, don't get – make sure to think about the atmosphere. Um, have music. Have liveliness. If people come in and it's quiet and dead, you know, and there's no energy, I think that that communicates um, something about about your event. So make sure it's fun and lively. Um, and, again, reach out to me anytime with questions. Thank you so much, Tiffany. So I will um – be advancing the slides soon, so if you didn't get Tiffany's contact information down, don't worry, um, because I will be sending out a follow-up email um, to this webinar, and I'll be sure to include Tiffany's contact information um, and the PowerPoint. And the PowerPoint. Um, so please, please reach out, reach out to Tiffany, though, because I think that Thedom, um has a level of assistance we can provide, but we are not local practitioners doing this work on the ground. So as much as you can connect with hosts from the past, the better. Uh, and part of our assistance this year is we're going to um, be working to facilitate greater interaction between all of you as hosts so that you can get that direct on the ground um, perspective and guidance um, even more than you have necessarily in the past. Okay, so just an overview of our assistance. Um, CEDAM provides the main Show Me the Money Day website, and on our website we have unique pages for each local Show Me the Money Day event. Um, so if you don't have a website or you don't want to include the Show Me the Money Day information on your website or have a, a way to do that, we actually allow you um, a page within our site so that, um, for instance, for a Lansing's event, um, there their page is found at showmethemoneyday.org slash Lansing. And so you can actually use that in your marketing um, if, if you would like to do so. We also provide two toolkits. So we have our, our planning toolkit for Show Me the Money Day and an outreach and marketing toolkit. You can find those on our website. Um, the planning toolkit goes through those event elements again. Um, and I want to just point out that um, we find those elements as being important to to ensure a level of consistency around our state. But they also, within those elements, there's a lot of flexibility. Um, you can be going for a smaller event, a, target, a certain particular target population in your community, or provide an event that's more like what Lansing does and be going for large numbers and more of a broad base within the community. And so we do allow that flexibility. Um, and you can think as well how you'd like to build your event over time. But following the toolkits allows you to make sure that you have some of those specific elements we like to see, um, but also you can be flexible within them. We do provide um, no-cost graphic design assistance. Um, we have a logo and flyer that we provide to each site. Um, and then we also have some templates. and. Um, the templates will be available on the members only page, which I mentioned earlier. Once you sign the MOU, you're able to access these additional resources. Um, we do provide technical assistance, and so that can take a variety of forms. Um, if it's something where you would like a CDM staff person to come out to your first planning committee just to give an overall presentation to your members about Money Day and help make the case, we can do that. If you'd like to have phone calls throughout um, your planning and just get some feedback um, from us or have us connect you to some some local hosts that have been doing this a few years, we can do that as well. So the technical assistance um, can really be tailored to your community and your needs. 
New for this year, we are going to be hosting monthly calls for marketing and outreach. And I think that's a piece where um, events need um, a certain level of assistance, but also that piece where it's really the on-the-ground practitioners that can provide the best guidance for how they've driven attendance to their events in the past. And so by bringing you all together on monthly assistance calls, we're hoping you can share best practices, talk about shared challenges, and how to address them, um, and really you know, cross-collaborate across between sites in Michigan. Um, so then the final piece of assistance is we, again, for 2015, just as we did in 2014, we will be providing subgrants for each of you um, to host events. Um, however, we have had a number of organizations we've not worked with in the past um, show that they have interest in hosting an event. So while we didn't have an application process last year, we will have an application process this year for our subgrants. Um, and you'll be able to get the application and more information on September 15th. Okay, just to make sure we um, clarify some things that are new for this year, I just mentioned the subgrants that will have an application process. Um, we're also going to do more of a coordinated media push, and this is something we will discuss on our marketing and outreach calls. Um, but we're going to make sure that you all have templates for press releases and op-eds, and that we all kind of work together. We recognize that our events aren't happening on the same day, so we, we will have, you know, sort of a staggered timeline for this, um, but we do want to make sure that we've got things hitting the media both locally in your outlets and your communities, but we're also going to work through CEDAM to try to push some um, broader stories on this work that showcases that this is happening across the state. So not new this year, the Partner Outreach Toolkit, typo on the slide, but there is a toolkit to help you all with your outreach. Um, what is new this year is we are going to develop a social media presence from CEDAM standpoint. We haven't done that before, um, but we think it's something that can be really useful. We've seen other events be successful the past couple of years with Facebook marketing, um, and so we think that a greater social media presence can really help our events. And then, as I mentioned, we are going to be doing marketing and outreach calls, um, and those will be the first Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. starting in September. And in the, in the follow-up email to this um, webinar, I'll make sure to send you the details for those calls. Okay. And the last piece is I definitely want to make sure to thank our sponsors. Both Charter One Bank and Consumers Energy are statewide sponsors of Show Me the Money Day. And so their support allows CEDAM to provide our assistance activities um, from a staff perspective, but also they're the supporters for the subgrants to each of your events. And so our concluding slide is just the um, support staff at CEDAM, our contact information, so you can get more, so you can connect with us. Um, I should have put Tiffany's on this slide, it would have made it easier, but again, I'll be sure to send all of that information out in our follow-up email. Um, and at this time, I would like to open up for question and answer. Um, and I'm going to unmute all of you, but if we get feedback, I'll mute you all again, and we'll have to use the chat function for questions. And feel free to ask me questions about general Show Me the Money Day and the assistance CEDAM provides, but then also we still have Tiffany on to answer questions about Lansing and their marketing and outreach activities. The conference has been unmuted. Hey, any questions? And there's silence during Q&A. It's either a really good or a really bad sign. <laughs> Quickly, um, I just wanted to mention, too, something I forgot to say, but emphasize your prizes um, in your marketing top thing, your prizes and kind of those things. I think that really gets people. And free food. Don't forget to mention that you're having free food if indeed you are, um, which I recommend. But definitely prioritize the prizes and the food in your marketing. 
I do see a chatted question from Miriam, um, and we will be sending out the PowerPoint presentation in the follow-up email. So you'll definitely have access to that presentation. We will have a recording of this webinar as well. Megan, what is the time uh, for the event normally? How long does it run? We've had events last anywhere from two to six hours, um, so it's really up to you. That's one of those pieces that we – so encourage local flexibility or makes more sense to your community. I would say probably the average is about four hours, but events like Lansing go a little bit longer, um, and newer events might be a little bit shorter, but it's up to you. Okay. And um, you, you said you would provide us with, because um, I'm in Detroit, so you said someone hosted it here last year. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, Wayne Metro actually hosts events in Detroit and Taylor, and so um, anyone from those communities, communities that are interested in an event, um, please reach out to me, and I'll connect you um, to Miriam with Wayne Metro. I think she's on. She just asked a question, so she's probably still on. Um, okay. And so we'll make sure to connect all of you. There's also the opportunity because um, – you know, the Detroit community is so large, um, we could have multiple events there as well. Um, smaller communities, it might not make sense, um, but right. I think that there's, an, there's definitely a, a lot of opportunity in southeast Michigan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the the list of um, the 11 that have uh, happened before, I don't remember. Were there rural communities on there? Um, I'm looking at a two-county coverage area, and I'm just wondering what uh, drawing people to an event. Um, or am I just, if I have it in Greenville, only Greenville people are coming. If I have it in Stanton, only Stanton people are coming. So I'm just wondering if anybody's had um, any luck bringing people together in a rural area. Well, so I think a good example of this would be that last year there were events in both Grand Haven and Holland. Um, and so the hosts, while, you know, while they're fairly close, the hosts of both events felt that it would be, it, it would be a barrier transportation-wise for people who live closer to Grand Haven to get to Holland and then vice versa. Um, and so I think that it's definitely particular to any given like county area or region if there's if there is a central location that people throughout several counties are used to coming to and there is transportation access to to get them there um, but i it I do think that oftentimes it makes more sense to host multiple events or maybe start with one target community and then move throughout your county. But again, I think it's something that's probably particular to any given area, like county area or region. So that's something we could talk through just one-on-one -on -one with TA, um, thinking through the best place to have it in your first year and how to make sure you can get the most people in your service area to the event. Yeah, it's the age-old question we have for everything um, because the – all of our partners are covering the same two county area we are and trying to get them to give multiple events or multiple days would be tough. So just trying to find a happy medium somewhere. Yeah, so that's something we'll definitely follow up and talk talk through. Um, and I think something also to, to post to your planning committee. Yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, I'm sorry. And one of the slides, I saw it mentioned that there was a toolkit available. How would you get that? So if you go to the Show Me the Money Day website, um, mm -hmm. so showmethemoneyday.org, mm -hmm. and then if you click on the tab at the top menu that says Plan an Event, mm -hmm. and an event page has a link to the toolkit. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. If you have any trouble accessing it through the website, just shoot me an email and I can send it to you. Thanks. Okay, I do see um, Miriam had a question. Do we have flexibility to select days of the event? Um, so, yes. We, from CDM's standpoint, we want to see this event be a kickoff to tax season, but we also recognize that 
there is not necessarily one day every year that it makes the most sense across Michigan to do this. Um, and so we we just ask that you host your event in either the month of January or the month of February. Um, and we encourage you to concentrate on that mid-January to mid-February time period because that's really what we would consider the beginning of tax season. Um, but per our MOU, it's just the only requirement is January or February. In terms of day of the week, um, any day of the week that makes the most sense for your community is fine. Any other questions? Hey, Megan, I have a question. <clears throat> okay, so when we have our uh, professionals, I I'm assuming, uh, to do the um, do the web, do the, the classes, um, do you recommend, like, maybe we should have a, a – they're doing this gratuitous, right? So we should have a gift or something for them, or how, or how is that – how do you guys normally do that, or how does that work? Well, that's a, that's a great idea. I – I don't know that any host organizations have provided gifts to presenters in the past. I think what usually happens is presenters come from either financial institutions or community-based organizations or even post-secondary ed, and they all see it as part of their mission to participate. Um, okay. So okay. I don't think that – I don't believe that any local hosts have had trouble getting people to come and, and do it um, for free. Um, however, the idea of like a small token of your thanks, I think, is really great. I'm sure all our hosts have at least provided thank you notes, um, mm -hmm. but it's definitely something that if you want to provide a gift, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Any final questions? Okay, well, thank you all so much for attending. Um, I want to thank Tiffany again for your presentation today. Um, I'm so excited that we have so many people on the line today and people from new communities and communities that have hosted in the past. So I think we have a great opportunity this, this year to expand Money Day um, and really get the word out to our residents. Um, so thanks again, um, and I will be in touch.